D.C., where the nation's capital and the reporters who cover it resemble Vatican watchers anxiously awaiting the white smoke signal to indicate that a report from Robert Mueller has been completed and handed over to the Attorney General. That report's transmission, which is expected any day now, to the Attorney General may not commence a public viewing of Mueller's findings, but the early contours of Donald Trump's response are coming into focus. It will surprise no one that the White House, before even seeing the report, is likely to describe it as an exoneration. The president's constant repetition of the no collusion refrain was designed to condition his base that short of unearthing a secret stash of selfies of Trump and Putin, no coordination had occurred, hence the no collusion mantra. There is no collusion. No collusion. No collusion. I did nothing wrong. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. There was no collusion at all. No collusion. No collusion. <clears throat> But Mueller's investigation has already borne fruits related to Russian meddling and suspicious contacts between the Trump campaign and Russia. Beyond the total of 26 Russians charged in the Mueller investigation so far, including Konstantin Kalimnik, a close ally of Paul Manafort, there were more than 100 contacts between Trump and his associates and Russians. That in and of itself is highly unusual for any presidential campaign in transition. But even more alarming were the lies told by Trump confidants to federal investigators and prosecutors. Those lies raising questions that still linger. We have never been offered an explanation, for example, of why Michael Flynn lied about his contacts with Russians over sanctions and a U.N. vote, or why he lied about talking to other Trump advisors about those conversations with Russians. Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen are also known liars on the topic of Russia. And Mueller's team has said that Manafort's lies go to the heart of the special counsel investigation, which brings us to another question at the heart of the Mueller probe. The counterintelligence investigation into the president of the United States, opened by then acting FBI director Andy McCabe. The basic theory is, of course, if the Russians know that you're lying to your boss, which is the case of Mike Flynn, uh, that's something that the Russians could potentially hold over your head to influence you to, to uh, um, influence you to do to do their bidding. Essentially, um, is there that same possibility of compromise with Donald Trump? Um, I think you have to answer that question in the affirmative. It's a possibility. Can I tell you for sure that that's happened? No. Can I tell you for sure that that's what Director Mueller has found or will conclude? Absolutely not. Um, but like all Americans, I, I, wait, I anxiously await the results of that uh, work. And a brand new piece in today's Washington Post from former Justice Department attorney Martin Letterman lays out why it matters to us now that the Mueller probe started its life as a counter intel investigation. He writes, quote, it's important to keep in mind that the Mueller report and bar notification aren't the whole ballgame, not by a long shot. Mueller was hired in the first instance to superintend an ongoing FBI counter intelligence investigation. It's virtually certain in this case that Barr, Mueller and the FBI. FBI will at a minimum inform the intelligence committees about whatever evidence Mueller has collected concerning whether Trump is compromised with respect to Russia. Mueller's general conclusions on those questions and at least an outline of the evidence supporting them aren't the sorts of things the Justice Department could realistically or should omit in its required reporting. And just a few moments ago, new comments from the official whose firing led to the opening of that counterintelligence investigation. James Comey publishing a new op-ed in the New York Times on what he expects from Mueller's report, writing, quote, the interests of justice will best be served by maximum transparency about the special counsel's work. I don't know all the considerations that will go into deciding precisely what to say about the completion of that work and when to say it. But because the Department of Justice is guided first and always by the public interest, it should provide details about finished investigations when the public needs to know them as it traditionally has. And that is where we start today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Harry Lippman, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and Executive Producer of the new Talking Feds podcast. Here on set, Associated Press White House reporter Jonathan Lemire, NBC News National Political Reporter Carol Lee, Matthew Miller, former Chief Spokesman at the Department of Justice, and Karine Jean-Pierre, Senior Advisor to MoveOn.org. Matt Miller, it cannot be 
repeated enough how vast the Mueller probe was. And because of how opaque it was, we sometimes talk about the collusion probe, the obstruction probe, but at its heart, it was a counterintelligence investigation. Yeah, and you went through some of the open questions at, at the beginning. There are, there are many more. You could have spent the entire show going through questions like, for example, did the president know about the meeting at Trump Tower? Um, did the president direct one of his aides to get in <coughs> touch with Roger, with Roger Stone about WikiLeaks? Did the president himself talk to Roger Stone about WikiLeaks? All of these are key questions that are important both for criminal investigative reasons and for counterintelligence reasons. And this investigation, as, as often will happen in big DOJ investigations, the two get joined. It's not just counterintelligence or criminal. They're actually related, and counterintelligence investigations can produce criminal charges. But at the heart, this was opened as a counterintelligence question, and the, the underlying question, which is, has the president been compromised, is something that the Justice Department has to answer for the United States Congress, at least for the intelligence committees, probably to a broader audience than that. Harry Levin, when I interviewed James Comey, he was very forthcoming, but the one question he wouldn't answer was if Mike Flynn had to be uh, someone for whom alarm bells were rung by Sally Yates, who came over to the White House and walked into White House counsel. It's, it's so amazing. You talk about Sally Yates gone, Don McGahn gone. She, that's who Sally Yates came over and informed that Mike Flynn could be a possible target for blackmail because he had lied about his contacts with Russians. When I asked Jim Comey if Donald Trump couldn't also be a target for blackmail, he didn't give me the answer that Andy McCabe gave in that clip we showed, that, that of course you had to take that into consideration. Do you think that Robert Mueller has sought to answer the question whether Donald Trump could be a target for blackmail from Russians because of the lies told about his contacts and his ongoing negotiations for Trump Tower Moscow? No doubt about it. As Matt says, you read the actual body of the appointment of Mueller, and that is any links between the campaign and Russia, what he has been directed to answer. And it did begin, and Comey knows this as a counterintelligence operation that he first announced to the Congress. That's what it says in the appointment of Mueller. That's the one that's, that's being continued. I think he wants to give Mueller breathing room and not prejudge in any way, but all the things we've been hearing that have been developed over the last um, year plus go to that question as much as criminal liability, and Mueller certainly is about the task of answering it. I'll just, I'll just make one little nugget to add. You heard Andrew Weissman tell the judge that the core of their inquiry, at the core of their inquiry, is this meeting that Manafort had to pass polling information on to Kalimnik. If that's at the core of their in inquiry, then these questions of exactly what was going on between the campaign, including Trump and Russia, has to be at the center of what they're going to report about. Carol, what are you looking for as this, as this massive um, you know, mothership of the Mueller probe prepares to, to, to not tie a bow on its investigation, but, but, but try to condense it, hand it off to the attorney general, having seeded all these other investigations, criminal or otherwise, at other offices? I think the thing that you're talking about here, which is the counterintelligence piece, you, to, to throw out there, as Andy McCabe did and first was reported in the New York Times, that there's a question about whether the president of the United States is compromised in some way by a foreign adversary. You have to answer that question. If yeah. not for any other reason, then the American public deserves to know the answer to that question. And so as we all wait for the Mueller report, you, and the question that we're asking is what's going to become public? What will we know? What will we learn? And, and there are questions about, you know, past experiences with, the, for instance, James Comey and the Clinton investigation and him putting forward information um, that wasn't necessarily in pra t traditional practice of the Justice Department. There's questions about whether that should apply here. And, you know, I don't have an answer for that, but I do think that in terms of a counterintelligence investigation about whether the president of the United States is compromised, that that would seem like the kind of thing that would rise to the level where you do need to level with the American public and say yes or no. No, or maybe, or whatever it is. You, try, you, answer, you have an answer <clears throat> to that question. I mean, I mean, your, your answer yesterday at this table was that because we believe they're operating under the guidelines that you can't indict a president, you absolutely answer the question. Yeah, exactly. It, you can't have it both ways or the president is above the law. If the president can't be indicted, 
but you can't tell Congress or the American public about his misconduct, then essentially he can get away with anything. For that Justice Department opinion to have any meaning other than the president is above the law, if the president can't be indicted, then that means the Justice Department has to turn over evidence of presidential misconduct to Congress. And even if the Justice Department concludes that the president committed a crime, they're not the arbiter in this standard. Congress is, by their own admission. So they have to give the evidence that they found to Congress so they, Congress can decide criminality is one question, high crimes and misdemeanors are another question with a different standard, and that's a question for Congress to decide. And that means all of the criminal questions, plus questions of abuse of power, plus questions of whether he's a, comprom whether he's compromised, uh, a compromised Russian asset. So uh, we've tried to use this time this week bef before a report comes out. And, and, and again, we don't know when that report will be um, shared from uh, the Mueller probe with the Attorney General, but we don't expect even when that happens for it to be made made right. public. There'll be a review process. There's cl we're talking about classified information. I was reminded by a former senior intelligence official that Robert Mueller has has had access to the most sensitive intelligence, not just from American intelligence officials, but if he wanted it from our allies who who would have access to intercepts and, and other classified information. But some of the questions we have are, are born from the Helsinki moment created by your question. And, and we have had to swim around in the stream of, of what has been publicly facing from this president. The public facing conduct certainly makes it legitimate to ask whether he's not acting on some information or, or some flow of, of, of information about what Putin would like a Russian friendly American president to do and say. And that's what he did when responding to your question in Helsinki. That's right. And to Carol's point, I mean, this is something the American public deserves to know. And that if you were just simply watching his statements. And this dates back to the campaign when the change to the Republican platform in Cleveland to his talk, echoing Putin talking points about why Russia was involved with Afghanistan. And then most notably, time and time again, him siding with Russia's assertions about the 2016 election over the conclusions of every U.S. intelligence agency, with, yes, Helsinki being that, that, that sort of the pinnacle of that. We're standing in front of the world. He decided to not pick the home team. And instead, he gave equal weight to what Vladimir Putin told him. And that's, it is, taking a step back, it remains a remarkable moment and a remarkable theme that time and time again, the, the, this president and the people around him have acted in a way that has not dismissed these questions. That here we are, you know, in March of 2019, still wondering, still wondering if, yeah, yeah, if, if this is still <laughs> happening. And Bob Mueller, we're, we're ready. Uh, <laughs> we uh, is, we're waiting for this. Uh, we are ready. But yes, you're right. We don't know if that's going to be anytime soon. Whenever this report is transmitted to Department of Justice, and we all do believe it'll be soon-ish, yeah. you know, there may then be another agonizing wait right. to start recognizing what he has discovered, and not just for us in this room to figure out, but most importantly, the American people. And Harry, it could also include a, a painstaking review of classified information. I, I mean, he could answer some of the questions we're talking about. Mueller could travel some distance toward, toward offering some of, of what his investigation bore out on the counterintelligence front. But that information could simply go from one very opaque, very protected corner of the Justice Department to another. And, and, and what would that review look like as, as someone you, you've operated at the highest levels yeah. of the Justice Department? Yeah, it's really true. There's this extreme myopia now. When's it coming? It's coming any second. It's coming any second. <laughs> well, but what happens after? It does land on Bill Barr's desk, and you have two categories of difficult information. National intelligence, which we have to imagine will not be transmitted in public, but will go to the leaders of the intelligence committees, and then grand jury information. There is a little bit of precedent for, for revealing that. That is what happened in Watergate. There's been some uh, civil rights investigations where the department has talked about uncharged conduct. As Comey says, public interest is the, the watchword. But yeah, Barr is going to have to, there's going to be a lot of constituents there, including the intelligence agencies who are going to weigh in on what can be revealed and what can't. And this is going to be a real boiler maker for Barr because once we know it's there, then there's going to be every day, when's it coming, when's it coming, when's it coming? That's going to be tricky.
So, Kareem, we're, yeah. we're talking about the, the, the most sensitive parts mm -hmm. of the Mueller probe, the counterintelligence investigation, the questions that, that may arise around uh, contacts with Russia, the obstruction of justice investigation, which, which we've also been covering sort of as a separate track. It seems like there may be fewer reasons to protect that information. That may be the most robust part of and some of the earliest information we learn. Republicans are on the record around crimes of obstruction of justice, except the president was a Democrat. Let's, let's watch some of the Republicans. He tried to paint himself as a victim when he wasn't. That the president has engaged in a persistent pattern and practice of obstruction of justice. The law does not stop at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. In our constitutional democracy, no one, not even the president, is above the law. The president turned the justice system upside down on many occasions for his personal gain. The allegations are grave. The investigation is legitimate and ascertaining the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the unqualified, unevasive truth is absolutely critical. I could watch that over and over again because I think every one of those men is going to eat those words yep. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the coming days if they come anywhere short of not holding Donald Trump, a Republican president for whom they serve as sycophants and servants, yep. when it comes to questions of obstruction of justice. I, I can't imagine. I I'll be pleasantly <laughs> surprised if they hold Donald Trump to the same standard oh, they held Bill Clinton. I think from everything that we've seen in the last two years, they're not. I think they are all bought in. They Why not? I, I mean, the, the things that this guy has done, that Donald Trump has done, and they have not moved on it. I mean, even with McCain, the, the weak kind of uh, t uh, tweet from um, uh, McConnell, just the response from uh, Lindsey Graham, I mean, they don't have a backbone. I don't think that they're going to come forth and say, oh, yeah, we're going to hold the pres this president uh, accountable. I just don't see it. And the other thing, too, uh, another lens that I was, I was thinking about on how to look at this report and why the public needs to know, a year from now, we're going to have an election in 2020. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget, this is a foreign government that interfered in our elections, free and fair elections, the cornerstone of our democracy. The public has to know what happened in 2016 or else how are they supposed to believe in the electoral process? And also the last part about this is that, you know, Mueller has surprised us at every turn. Yeah. He yeah. really, really has. Yeah. We have no idea what's going to happen. We have no idea what's going to happen, but, but we know the president has sought to obstruct justice and, and, and even current and former Justice uh, Department officials make, make, make no secret that, that that is obvious. What we don't know is what that will look like when, when Mueller turns over the obstruction of justice probe. Yeah, just the public evidence, firing Comey, asking him to back off of Mike Flynn, trying to fire Mueller and only failing because his, his staff refused to carry out a direct order from the president. We already know enough to know that he at least abused his power to obstruct justice. It may not cross the line into a criminal statute. There's a question over whether the president can, you know, exercising his constitutional authority is can be a crime bill Barr, the attorney general doesn't think so but it is without a doubt an abuse of power an obstructive abuse of power what we need to find out is the other both any other actions he took and what was he telling his aides for example when he fired comey was he telling people like steve bannon and jared kushner and others you know if i get rid of jim comey it'll end this investigation we know that kushner like trump thought that it would make the investigation go away was trump talking about that as a reason for firing comey that would be strong evidence of consciousness of guilt. All of those aides have been in to be interviewed by Bob Mueller, and that is one of the things that has never leaked out. We haven't heard anything about what those interviews produced, and that's one of the big unanswered questions for the report. And we know Don McGahn spent more than 30 hours yep. with Robert Mueller, so uh, 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 a Justice Department official told me recently that Robert Mueller was never not interested in the obstruction probe. Right. And I think everything that Matt just talked about in terms of the White House, with how the White House cooperate on this, this is where you're going to see this White House step in and say, you know, this is if this is privileged. Those conversations are privileged. You can't let that out. And so we're like such a long way from having the full picture that we've all been really wanting to have for some time, because there's not only the bar piece of things, there's going to be this battle and the intelligence review. There's going to be a battle with this White House. And, you know, they're not they're already also saying 
they're going to do their own report. So there's going to be this bigger battle for public opinion, you know, even with whatever comes out. And then you're going to have Democrats um, on the Hill who have this new power and are going to ironically use some of the tactics that Devin Nunes used with the Clinton investigation mm -hmm. to get whatever information out of the Justice Department that they Democrats feel that they're not getting. For instance, if there are no charges, then they can say, well, let's look at that discussion. We want documents that have everything to do with the discussions about not bringing any charges and things like that. So, you know, I, I think that, that you're going to see a White House in the meantime just completely dig in. Is that what you Yeah, that, that's my reporting exactly backs that up, that if there's stuff in there that they don't like, there's going to be a, an aggressive use of executive privilege and attempt to assert so that. Would you guess that people like <laughs> Emmett Flood and, 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 and the new White House counsel? White House counsel, yeah, the are, White House counsel's office is going to be where this is, is centered. Certainly, they're going to be very, I think, very bullish as to what they can do. And, and I also think beyond that, the, we, we know from, from Rudy Giuliani and others that, that they're preparing their counter rebuttal. That they obviously haven't seen the Mueller report yet, but they've been working alongside kind of like, kind of like a parallel report that they aim to release around the same time as Mueller transmits the DOJ. But they'll be rebutting findings on this obstruction front that, that, that were born out of interviews with people like Don McGahn and other White House aides. Yeah, I think it's quite possible this, this executive privilege battle is already being weighed. Something has happened to delay the release of the report. The Justice Department was pretty clear on back around with reporters. The report was going to be released by mid-May. We're past mid-May. It hasn't been released. I don't know if that's mid -March. just mid-March. Mid -March. Mid -March. Excuse me. We're I don't know. If there were reports. We're all, we're all there, were reporters, yeah. there were reports that, that mid-February. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's just taking longer because things often take longer at the Justice Department. It's a building filled with lawyers. Obviously, they like to review <laughs> things. They like to, to, to check every uh, every possible box. But something has happened to delay it. It's possible that the president is already making these claims, yeah. and that Bill Barr is so. you know is, is engaged in a fight with the president over what gets released. Least. Harry, you want to get the last word on that? Yeah, I think Bill Barr will have the final word, and I, I don't think he'll, I think he'll let him see it, but I don't think he'll stand for too much in the way of executive privilege. That's point one. Second, ex, uh, all these fights, including the ones that Cummings is talking about, um, you know, if they're waged in the courts for Congress, they're going to take a while, and that puts Congress at a disadvantage. And third, just in general, on the obstruction piece, if the narrative that Mueller releases says there's obstruction, Barr can't really countermand that. So if there's a definite story that comes out and says there was obstruction, I'm not going to indict, that changes the dynamic uh, overnight, I think. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.